to a point right now with this game that, uh, or this part of this game, where I have to uh, go and do some other stuff for a little while. It's just becoming overwhelming. Uh, due to, there's just so much going on, and but I want to uh, bring out a few things. I'm absolutely shocked at how much light, or how well the camera's taking the light, because I've got the drapes, so I thought for sure I'd have the shimmer lights on, but I don't. I'm not going to do a close-up as well. There's just too much going on. I will do close-ups later. Okay. I'm trying to learn, and the first thing I'm learning right now is, at least from my perspective, is... Um, my military eyeballs are always going to be bigger than um, my military stomach. And if I don't clue into that quick, I'm going to face a ton of disappointment. A ton. Like I've said before, pair back, pair back, pair back. Keep, like, one, if I want to do this objective, bring it back. There's just no bloody way. Okay. This is a diversion. I'm getting ready for springtime primarily. I can do some stuff now, I think. But it would be expensive due to the fact that the uh, trenches, every, almost everybody's uh, um, entrenched, not these people here. We'll talk about, uh, and these guys here, we'll talk about lots of stuff, I hope. Anyways, trenches add to uh, uh, or subtract to the, to the attacker's die roll modifier. They don't uh, do anything for the counterattack. Also, um, the defender does, it's kind of like a fortress, uh, kind of. The defender doesn't have to retreat unless um, uh, the attacker is able to inflict uh, the same or, uh, or more uh, strength points that they have. So it, it's difficult. That being, And then if you take it, uh, that uh, hex becomes a devastation marker, which means it now is um, no defensive um, bonus for you, but it still uh, it, uh, adds two to the movement cost. I think trenches do still as well, I'm not sure. All right, what else can I tell you about trenches? Um, they're a bitch, that's what I'm gonna say. And of course, they're also cumulative. That's the difference, I think, than a fortress, is that, um, or urban center, or whatever. I still have to add, tack on the terrain uh, modifiers. So there's lots of areas here where it's like, okay, you can go. But it's like, I'm getting a minus four to the die roll already. If I attack somebody who's entrenched in a wooded area, <coughs> excuse me, it's minus four to the die roll. Holy Christ, it's brutal. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, lots of things. We're going to get eventually to why I'm just going to project towards the north. This is going to be a diversionary thing. Um, for the Germans... I'm trying to keep my options open. I don't know where the hell the Russians are going to go to. I can probably figure out to, up to a certain degree. And there's another upper level I'd like to get into. Like I said before, I want to like perhaps figure out a way of uh, expending points where I can use uh, intrigue and whatnot to maybe you know find out what the hell the Russians are up to. That type of stuff. Also, the, the aerial asset points for reconnaissance with my airplanes. I also want to, uh, there's so many things I'm trying to uh, put in little tiddly bits, my tough bananas, and, and do my thing. And people are like, oh, I'm too finicky. Does that matter? This is like uh, living, breathing, and I'm just having fun. Um, and trying to learn, I'll be honest with you. Here's another thing. I have to turn off the music uh, to hold on here. Um, I thought it would be all right, but she's, it's amazing music, just so bloody intense. Hold on. I'll try to explain all, like, I know that you can't see most of the things here. Like I said, later on, I'll try to do a close-up. Now, one major thing we have to remember going through here right now, it's winter time. So, for winter, that means uh, my line of supply is reduced from uh, four to three for an attack, hexes for an attack, and eight to six hexes for a counterattack. 
Secondly, I've included an extra wrinkle of complication. Um, Dravel Creek doesn't have it. It drives me up the tree. I think it drives a lot of other people up the tree as well. Is the fact that um, for, for line of communication, all right? So line of communication is essentially an army or a core HQ needs a line of communication. Otherwise, if they don't have one, um, they suffer, uh, they suffer penalties in how they can supply attacks. I'm also going to use that bit in winter time. So if a core army or core HQ cannot, do, does not have a line of communication, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute, and it's winter time, essentially what that means is um, core, uh, army or core HQs can only supply an attack if they're adjacent to the hex. They can't be in the same hex because they can't supply, uh, as far as I know, you can't supply in, in, in an enemy zone of control. There was another uh, thing I forgot about core HQs. It's been so long. I, I was putting 12 uh, supply points in some of these core HQs. Can't do that. Secondly, I'm not sure if I was reading the rules properly, but I'm going to go with my new interpretation, which makes sense with what I know historically and what happens anyways with, I can combine attacks, for example, on the same hex and supply, uh, use supply from two different army headquarters. When I was reading, I think it's rule section 18.8, I'm not, don't quote me on that, but um, it is about that in campaigns only or whatever, core HQs can, uh, an attack can only be you can only use two supply points for an attack with core HQs. I took that literally. So I was like, okay, you can only use one court no matter how many core HQs are around. It's like, now I'm thinking, it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, like, come on, let's be honest. There, there was a lot of coordination of attacks and I've even gone away from that yet again where I don't allow coordination of attacks for a large part between uh, armies even in the same side I'm not whatever it's you know that type of thing so there we go so what I'm saying is I'm now allowing I'm just keeping the limitations to what it should be for the infrastructure the core HQ can only logistically supply two uh, supply points for one attack in a turn or four supply points uh, I think it's the way to go for uh, counterattack whatever you get the idea um, but I can have tons of core HQs uh, mounting, uh, you know, combining their supply points onto an attack. If I can so, you know, can so do it, I, I'm all right with that because it makes sense. All right, but I am putting a constraint, which where we're getting back to the line of communication bit, is in Derbelt Creek, a line of communication can be indefinite. And what a line of communication is, is a line of communication is a line of hexes from the a army or core HQ to a, this is the kicker, and I, I clued in last night, when oh my God, sweet Jesus, I love you, uh, is active friendly, not your own, but active friendly rail line or a supply depot that does not come up, uh, th does not run through, um, prohibitive train, terrain for obviously the army or core HQ or goes through a hex that uh, is an enemy zone of control that does not have a friendly uh, unit in it. Friendly. Get the idea? Remember all these things. That's why I'm looking at it. Okay, done is, done is son. So we're, we're not here. I gotta put my glasses back on. So I was going really hard here. I'm still uh, calling it, what am I calling it? Oh, Operation, hold on here. Operation, oh, it's probably my Germany book. Hold on here. Yeah, I gave up 16 supply points to the Austrians over here. We're gonna take this, we're gonna, we've decided, uh, we've asked, um, it just makes sense for terrain wise and what I would like to do as a diversion. And the Austro-Hungarians -Hungari uh, were like, okay, so I gave them 16 supply points. We take over this hex, but it's going to help us in the long run. They're like, okay, we just shortened our line again, another 20K, and we get 16 extra supply points. Thanks, man. Um, 
it just helps us. I'm not a big fan, uh, it, narratively speaking, of wanting to coordinate an attack with Austro-Hungarians who haven't been playing ball with us. That's why I'm looking at it. So I'm like, screw you. But so we're going to try to take control, which means we'll take control of this hex. It'll turn into an orange one. And we, we have the potential to start mounting the things. So let's get back to the wrinkles. I'll get into the other stuff in a minute. So like I said, uh, as long as I can do that, your line of communication can be indefinite. I'm not a big fan of that. So I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what the rules say, except it's limited to eight movement point hexes or non-rail, obviously, or um, um, yeah, eight and then um, drops down to six in winter time. That's the extent that an army or eight uh, core HQ can draw supply properly or have a line of communication properly to the rest of the world, their friendly world or whatever, and extend out, which that, which that means I've caused myself severe limitations and compound that with winter time. So when I saw that, I started cluing in that, guess what? I can't just willy nilly make attacks all over the place, so we can do that anyways, I'm trying to learn, because like one hex later, I may just, that's it, I can't supply anybody, so what? what's the point? I, like, I've, I've spent like a bazillion supply points and tons of casualties to get a hex to do what? Not to mention, most of this crap is in Russia. I can't convert any of this rail to friendly rail during winter and even during the summer for christ's sakes or non winter months it's every alternate turn it's gonna take forever thank god this was a master stroke to be allowed to go here but it doesn't well kind of in a weird way it was like the rules would have said that anyways but i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know it said friendly so anyways so these l's we can't see them but here are the lengths this is the furthest I can take uh, go from any of those uh, conditions. I can put an army or a core HQ. Now from there, I can start seeing that I can only attack from three movement points out because it's winter time. After that, I can't supply. I can't properly supply you. I start taking penalties. This is a no-go zone for any offensives. I wouldn't go here anyways. I mean, we got fortresses from here tomorrow. The hell do I want to go towards Warsaw for? And it's like. From my perspective, I was visualizing a very deep pit, and the only way to fill up that hole was to put in an obscene amount of supply points and casualties. I just kept seeing the dead bodies pile. It just seemed ridiculous. Now, here's the kicker, though. I've got three areas here I can't entrench. All three are I cannot supply properly. I'm almost to the point that I need these guys, too. I'm almost to the point where I'm thinking I can, I want to get the hell out of there. I won't, but it's like, it's causing me major grief. I can't, I can't supply them. I, the terrain is too prohibitive. That's why yet again, looking when I wanted to go here originally, I started calculating and I'm being not overly optimistic and not overly pessimistic. Let's say in the middle, in the middle, I was looking at about, it's probably going to take three or four cracks to nail each hex. So let's say three turns. I was looking at about, probably you're looking at about fully supplied and not using infantry as fodder, as in like two for one to make up for unsupplied attacks. I'm, I'm talking full on here. We're looking at probably nearly, I don't, this is the way my mind's working because it's like you got to start cluing in, Chris. It's going to cost nearly 90 supply points. Like, 30 it's insane like that's about no, I, I'm just saying I, it's not good so here's the 12th army where I can probably put them uh, each member each army HQ has three core HQs uh, you can't see them here but these are my extensions from the rail line at present I can go and then I started also putting some S's to see how far I could extend or fully supply an attack um, I just wanted to to show what my limitations were. What I'm gonna do um, primarily in this area, like I said, is probably form a diversion. I um, would really like to start, it's 
probably my best shit. I can't even flip and supply this guy properly because of the forest and the rain, uh, the river. I've got lots of areas I can attack here, but it's going to cost, yet again, minus four to the die roll. Trench and woods. I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Supporting cores. Uh, probably put a third core there. It's going to be actually uh, the tenth core. It's going to be somewhere around there, but I didn't put a thing here because they have no limitation to their, uh, their there. That's going to be actually tenth core is, um, uh, uh, what, what is it called? Core, uh, uh, Core Commandant um, Von Bosma is there. So that's that. Um, yeah, and I, like I said, this uh, the 12th Army Commander is uh, Robert Von Koch. He used to be Robert Koch. Now he's been, you know, popped into nobility land. So I'm not, I'm going to try as hard as I can to um, not do anything there. Now, all the Core HQs, I'd like to give them about I wanted to give them tons, but I've got 12. I wanted to give them eight. That brings me up to 96. And I gave away 16 to the other dudes. Uh, I'm down to like less than, I think something like 100 or, no, no, even less. I think it's like 70 or 80 supply points. Do you, and I just talked to you about it's going to cost a ridiculous amount, like boom, 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 to nail them. This is assuming... Um, I'm doing assumptions of seven strength points across. I know the Russians are not going to have that, but I'm trying to do that. I've also got four positions here. Um, I'm trying to think of, um, I want to keep reserve units. They're not too many and I have a lot anyway, so it doesn't matter, I guess. They're going to be entrained and I don't want to leave them on there forever, but I just don't know where the Russians are actually going to do anything. But I want to have, so, I want to have, um, the possibility of reacting properly. The other thing about reacting though, like I've said before, is I want to start getting into the fact of I've got to start thinking several turns in advance. That's why I stopped this. I was like, okay, we're not going to put all our eggs or we're not going to go that way. It would be a diversion and this is a spring opportunity. I'm going for Lublin. Monster. Monster. i got to figure out the name of the uh, thing. Remember I said it was called a, um, calling it, um, oh, I don't have it written down here. Operation Umstelten, which I think is Operation Shift. That's basically um, the theme I'm trying to use is how to shift microly and macroly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's so weird to be thinking operationally and not even um, considering what's going on on the upper level or the below level. But I'm starting to see why people chit chat both ways. And there's always like a push and pull of wanting to do, and you're trying to do your own thing, but it's like, you know, people are always asking for this, that, and the other thing. And you're asking for this, that, and the other thing, and they ain't giving it to you. And <laughs> on and on and on. I, like, I am not even thinking about what's ahead. Uh, I'm not looking that way operationally. I'm just looking going, okay, this is what I need now. And this is what I think, um, you know, it's going to cost to do it, you know, so many, so many turns. And I'll let this dude, Hindenburg and Ludendorff, figure out how to get that, you know, and say yay or nay. So what I'm trying to say in the long run, we're going to put not all our eggs in one basket, like I've said before, but I'm trying to pare down. I started looking at the best places for me to extend and advance, which obviously would be East Prussia. Because I've got all the rail there, for Christ's sake. So I don't have to worry about trying to convert Russian rail every alternate turn. That's not going to happen till May. We're in December, for Christ's sakes. Um, and then I started looking at areas here to go, okay, what are my lowest die roll, uh, you know, demodifiers or whatever. So and this is probably it. It's I'm going to get a minus three. No, minus, yeah, minus three because of the um, broken terrain in the trench. Everybody else, it's minus four and up. And if I took this hex, this is causing major grief here. I'm really strangling these guys here. And yeah, I like it. I can 
concentrate a lot of areas. Like I've said before, I think this is a good spot. Now I just have to get into the um, specifics, but that's where I'm like, okay, just calm down. Go upstairs. Well, I can't. Well, I'll go upstairs quickly. It's insanely hot. But go grab and do something completely different. And I'd really like to um, um, stick, um, dip my toes into some RPG and uh, obviously great war related. That's for bloody sure. Uh, that's about it, I think. Oh well, I'm going forever and ever. But uh, so we've got ninth, eleventh, eighth. And I think this is the way to go. And like I said, yet again, slow down, stop, like, don't, um, how the hell would I go towards Warsaw? It's like a freaking, that's like a, it's a land of grief. Nope. So let's try to coax them. <laughs> coax them away. Let's see what happens. All right. See you later. Hope you're having fun, Matt.